I have been playing Battlefield 2042 for two weeks now. I got the early access of the game and to be honest I haven't played as much as I wanted to. This game is one of my most anticipated game of this year, so why haven't I been playing as much as I wanted to? Well, stick around and find out. Welcome to my first video of Battlefield 2042, ladies and gents. My name is Louis aka Manu Man here. In this video, I want to give you guys my opinion and thoughts on Battlefield 2042. Is it really that bad according to all these overwhelmingly negative Steam reviews? Let's dive into it. All my opinion and thoughts will be based on my experience on the PlayStation 5. I haven't played any other platform and I have not experienced any server disconnect that will kick me out of mid-game or anything like that nature or a really bad service lag or lag in general that I couldn't play and I need to leave the game. So nothing of that nature happened to me. Since we're on the topic of network, rubber banding and service lag is still there. For example, bullet spread in this game is absolutely horrendous, especially on the assault rifle. But sometimes when I do see the bullet hitting the target but nothing happened, no hit marker whatsoever, I spray a whole mag, didn't kill the target. So there are some rubber banding and slight service lag here and there on my first week of play specifically, but they have since fixed this on the first day patch and I've seen this a lot less frequently. The gunplay feel a little bit more smoother, but just so that you're aware, it could happen here and there and I think it is a little bit more prominent for the PC players. Right, so let's dive into the gameplay element of Battlefield 2042 and one of the biggest change that DICE have done on this game is classes no longer a thing for Battlefield 2042. If you ever play a past Battlefield games, you know it's all done by classes. You have Assault, Medic, uh, Recon or Support, you know, they, they name it differently but the, 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 the system, the mechanics is there. So instead of the class system, they have now a specialist. So each specialist have their own special abilities and gadgets and uh, each do their own thing. To me, I don't think it's working. I honestly don't think it's working. It is weird for a Battlefield game because it's about team play. Specialist is more of a solo thing is what I keep coming thinking about. You know, in Battlefield, it's all about working together and capturing the objectives. You know, killing is pretty much a nice to have. You know, you can kill a lot of people, but at the same time, you can kill absolutely nobody and you just heal, supply other players and revive your, your teammates, play the objectives. And without firing a single bullet, you can have a lot of fun in a Battlefield game and you can be right up the top on the leaderboard if you do all the little things without killing anybody. But with the whole specialist system, I just don't know if any of my squad mate are playing medic. Are they playing support? Are they playing as a sniper? Whatsoever. I don't know what role they are playing and how aggressive they are or they are supporting players. I don't know any of that. So I can't go into a role thinking that, okay, my, my, my squad is missing a sniper. Let me be a sniper. So then I can help them in the distance call out any sort of tanks or vehicle that are coming on their way or something like that. You know, I can't do that with this whole specialist system. Another thing about the specialist is that each player can use different weapons because all the weapons are unlocked now. It's not tied into the class system. So even though they're using the same specialist, different player can be using different weapons, snipers and LMGs or assault rifle or they could be ultra aggressive or they, be, they they can be hunting vehicles because there's a lot of goddamn vehicles in this game. So I don't know what role they were playing but in the previous Battlefield game I can just see oh they have a little icon saying they're medic. I know they will run around and revive people or they heal people. Oh they're sniper, they're recon or they will you know uh, snipe people out far. To fix this, or to kind of reinvent the wheel, let's just say, bring back the class system, but put these specialists into the class system. So you always have four class system, like I mentioned before. Your gadget and the specialization doesn't tie into the specialist, but it ties into the class. And the specialists themselves just become a skin, basically. And I think that works well in terms of the balance of the game and also to get to know what the role you are as a teammate that you're playing. 
I think it's important to have team play in the battlefield game and I just feel like specialists promote more solo play. I feel like, you know, for a step further, they should bring back the whole weapon being tied to the whole class system. Um, basically going back to the old school way, but just using specialists as a more of a skin. So another core gameplay element of a battlefield game has always been the vehicles. So the vehicles have always been OP in the whole battlefield franchise, but there are enough counters, inventory counters like uh, rocket launchers or proximity mine or C4. There's always enough to kind of balance out the dominance of vehicle. But the hovercraft, man, they are impossible to kill and they are insanely kitted up with armor and guns mini guns and they just destroy inventory left right and center now dice has said that they will patch this uh this week or next week i can't remember when but yeah definitely very strong at the moment and not just the hovercraft all the other vehicles um the the helicopters the tanks and some other kind of uh, light supposedly light armor vehicle are insane you know you can call in vehicles um quite often as well you can call in about four or five of these transport vehicle and a uh, few tanks here and there you know because it is 128 players big map and you definitely feel that vehicle opness when you are on the ground as an inventory and talking about inventory on um, for the gadget you can pick up uh, the M5 rocket launcher, anyone can. So your whole team of 64 players can have an M5 rocket launcher or C5, which is the equivalent of C4, um, to counter the vehicles. But the vehicles armored are so strong and they take way too long to kill with rocket, even with rocket launcher. And also because of the OPness, the balancing right now is asking people to equip all these rocket launchers and not many people equip health pack or ammo pack or the repair tool as their gadget. The repair tool is completely useless because uh, the vehicle will over time will reheal itself one one HP by one second kind of thing. So repair tool is just no one no one ever equipped that. So it's making some of the gadget completely pointless and everyone equipping M5 rocket launchers or C5 which is again one dimensional um, battlefield is supposed to be a balanced game with you can use all sorts of gadget to help you capture the objectives and you know be better than your uh, opponent but i feel like this is definitely restricting a little bit of a, your choice because of how op the vehicle is in conquest it's usually fine because the map and the objectives are a lot more spread out across the big map but in Breakthrough, because you're doing uh, sectors, sometimes it can get really manic with all the vehicles, defender, attacker, um, just lining up, tank sniping, it can get really mad. So talking about Breakthrough, objectives on top of a tall building is absolutely crazy, it's mad. I think how the de developer de visualized it, oh, it'll work, it'll be so cool, like attacking team will be going up the, uh, all the zip line, helicopter dropping out attackers the defender need to defend all points that kind of thing it get absolutely crazy but in reality it doesn't work in reality the defender have a very strong position to kind of close off all the entry on all the entry points for the attackers so yeah you just end up dying and dying and dying unless you have a bit of luck that defender de decided to start hunting attackers um which doesn't happen often so for what it is as well 128 players i think it's just too mad for the sector of breakthrough i've been playing a lot of breakthrough and i don't get a lot of kills uh because i don't know it just the traffic is just too much and i think they should really limit breakthrough to a 96 players in total so 48 players each team instead of the 64 each team 128 players in total so reducing the amount of players player counts will enhance the experience a lot more a little bit a little bit less chaotic and a little bit more kind of uh, feel like you are actually working towards something instead of just rushing with you know your whole team um, I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's weird when I play Breakthrough on any other Battlefield game, it feels balanced, it feels 
objective driven, but in Battlefield 2042 it just felt absolutely chaotic and I just, all the hours I spent playing it, I don't enjoy it at all, but when I jump back into Conquest, I absolutely have a blast. So there's something that needs doing on Breakthrough, um, maybe I'm just awful, I'm still awful at the game, and um, yeah, I just couldn't enjoy it, but hopefully it will click on me sooner rather than later on this game mode. So the last gameplay element probably on my list is relating to the weapon balancing. Weapon balancing need to happen sooner because the assault rifles are absolutely useless at, at the moment. It's so frustrating to use because the bullet spread is absolutely crazy. Doesn't matter what attachment you build on it, it makes it better, make it usable, um, but definitely not a gun that you will choose. The meta at the moment is the PP29, also called the Bison. This is the meta gun at the moment and it's very good compared to other uh, SMG, ARs or even LMG. The sniper is what I like, it's still very strong and is very nice to see, I've got no problem with that. It's a two shot in the body and one head shots. Another thing that tie into the weapon is the TTK, the time to kill which I think personally is insanely long in my opinion. I don't know why, but I feel like seven or sometimes against one person, I need to empty the whole mag into the player. And sometimes I still wouldn't get the, get the kill. That's probably mainly because I'm shit. But anyway, and something that really irritates me is the armor plate. So now players can put armor plates that have an extra 20, 20 health it just completely ruins the balance of the gunplay on the battlefield game. It, the consistency is gone, you know, even though it doesn't matter how much headshot you pop, sometimes you just lose gunfight because the other guy have a plate on. It's not because they're more accurate, you're hitting headshot, but because they have armor plate on, that means you die. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it just, yeah, completely ruined the consistency and the balance of the gunplay. I uh, understand that in competitive mode, maybe in Hazard Zone, it is, should be there because it gives you a competitive edge, but definitely not on a more generic Battlefield experience in my mind. So to fix this, I just feel like they need to disable armor plate, full stop. That's it. On, the, on Conquest, Breakthrough, and hopefully on any other game modes um, in the future, more generic game modes, disable armor plate for good. 100 health versus 100 health. That's it, nothing else. So those are my thoughts on the core gameplay element of Battlefield 2042. So there are still some kind of nitpicks um, that I listed on the screen that I think needs a, you know, needs a looking into. The majority of these are kind of like quality of life improvement for the game in general. So first of all, a proper scoreboard and to see your own stats. I like to see how much, how many times I die, which is a lot in this game, and how many times I kill, which is not many in this game. Uh, I would like to see that, and I would like to see uh, what my KD is, and to improve that. What is my score per game, so I can improve that, becoming a better team player, and become a better player in general. Because in all Battlefield game, you need to basically start over again you're always gonna do really badly at the start but once you click once you start getting used to the game used to the mechanics the gameplay the gunplay you will have great time with battlefield and i feel like the scoreboard and just the ability to see my stats will help me with that next up on the list is when you got gunned down um you should be able to see how far your squad mates who can revive you or any specialist with the revive ability how far are they? Are they coming closer and closer? Um, you should be able to save, to see that, just like Battlefield 5. Um, so then you can, if there's no one near you, then you can kill yourself. Uh, so then you can redeploy a little bit quicker. But if there's someone around you, then um, you can hold out for not to kill yourself. So then you can get a revive. At the moment, there's not a lot of revive happening is what i can see because a lot of people when i run down to them run up to them i even click r1 uh to calm them saying i'm coming they still kill themselves because there's no indication that i'm coming to them which is a little bit frustrating and again because there's only two specialists that can do it a revive on any teammates 
it kind of get bogged down to what they look like, right? Because the skin can be different and you don't know who's the medic and who's not, which is, again, the caveat of not having a class system. Next up on the list is the vehicle damage indicator to show how much hit point did I take away with my uh, C5 or with my rocket launcher so then I know the where the vulnerability of the tanks or the vehicles is and also how much health it has left kind of thing. It gives me a rough indication and that is missing. All it does is it have the little part damage or part take taken give me 10 xp and i'm just like what <laughs> what does that mean is, is it really dead is it not i don't know um so that's something that they need to add in uh, i think is, is a good to have as well because there's so many vehicles in this game like i said next up on the list is the ability to increase the size of the mini map don't need to expand on that um at the moment the mini map is very small and with 128 players uh, on the mini map it's it just basically filling everything you have that option on all the other Battlefield games, so uh, I'm guessing it's just a matter of time that dies bring that out on Battlefield 2042. So another thing on the list is sound. So specifically the footsteps are really messed up at the moment because I can hear all of the footsteps from my teammates, but I can't hear the enemies or I can't distinguish between the two. Because every time if I hear footsteps, I need to look at the mini-map and see if there's any teammate close to me um but even so there could be an enemy just right behind the corners that i just absolutely misjudge um so i feel like teammates footstep need to tone it down and the enemy footstep need to be i don't i don't know if it need to tone it up because i don't i can't distinguish between them at the moment um but yeah they ne definitely need to do some work on that at the bottom of the list here is of course more content like more guns more gadgets more vehicles because currently it is really lacking in that regard. Um, it just had enough, in my opinion, for people to play. But as the game get older and older, you want more weapons, more options immediately. And also more game modes like um, Team Deathmatch is currently missing. I would like a, a grand operation to come back like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5. Those are really fun, you know, a stretch of uh, three to four games and see who who wins out in the wall that is really fun and also a a training range maybe a shooting range training range you know those were uh, available in the past battlefield game so i really hope that they bring that back as well so all of these one that i just mentioned i believe it will happen eventually because there's a quality of life improvement and uh, some of the things that it featured in a past battlefield game so it's just a matter of time for dice to bring this out so currently those are my thoughts on how i perceive battlefield some of the negative points and my feedback towards the improvement the good points about the battlefield 2042 is that battlefield portal is an absolute blast it's a separate game mode and this is the hidden jam for this entire game like battlefield portal um, creative people can create excellent experience for people to join and play and you can also host different experience as well so huge potential on battlefield portal and i'm definitely going to do a video on that the solo and the co-op mode is also a good way to um, practice the game use the, the tanks the vehicles the guns sniping or learning the map as well on conquest or breakthrough so it's actually really good you can change the difficulty on the ai you know, from beginning to beginners to veteran. Um, you can level up your ranks and guns as well, um, but there are a there is a level cap every few hours or so, so you can't go too crazy on it. But because it's a battlefield game, just go play multiplayers and use the solo co-op mode for practice or to warm up your shot, that kind of thing, learn the map. The game, I think, looks absolutely brilliant on PlayStation 5. You know, I recorded this gameplay in 4K, so hopefully you agree with me as well. It sounds good, apart from the first step that I mentioned before. And I really like the, the plus system where I can change the attachment on the fly. Um, sometimes I change it to a different scope, sometimes a different, different kind of foregrip to help with different situations. So I think the plus system is a thumbs up. I, I wish it, it is here to stay. 
So with all that being said, um, I haven't played Hazard Zone right now. It's the only game mode I haven't tried because I'm still very pretty awful at the game. I'm still getting used to it. I'm trying to find that click of the game where I just feel like, okay, yeah, I'm good at this game now. Still haven't found that yet. Um, with all the weapons still being very unbalanced at the moment as well, so I thought I'd wait until more patches to come out and fix the vehicle, fix the guns a little bit before trying this a little bit, um, before trying out this, this game mode, which is a little bit more competitive. So I hope some of my thoughts and uh, what I want to see in terms of improvement will happen eventually on Battlefield 2042. The question is, is it as bad as everyone said? No. The game needs some improvement for sure, but this game is a complete blast to play. And especially if you have a few mates who got a copy of Battlefield 2042, jump in with them and uh, you guys will have a gr good old time. Great old time. DICE is actively patching the game as well to make sure that they can deliver a great experience that they promise. It is a big thing for them, this Battlefield game. They're not just going to dump it like they did with Battlefield 5. I can tell you that because there are plenty of communication on their Battlefield communication Twitter page and uh, I believe more content will come soon after a few quality of life and balancing patches. So that being said, that's my thought on the current state of Battlefield 2042. So if you play the game and you got some opinion on your own, uh, write them down on the comment section down below. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and put a smile on my face. And subscribe to my channel for more things Battlefield and any other game that I play. Stay safe out there, keep calm and video game.